G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our backyard farm. Today's clip, if I can beat the rain, is going to be answering a couple of frequently asked questions that I get on the aquaponics. Uh, there's a few that crop up all the time, so I thought if I pop them in a clip, it'll help a lot more people than just answering one-on-one -on -one in the comment sections, which I've already done anyway. So uh, if you do want to catch more of these um, aquaponic clips that we post to the channel, all you need to do is hit that little subscribe button down there and check the bell icon when it appears, and you'll be sent notifications whenever we upload clips to the channel on aquaponics or something else that's growing on in the patch here. So without any more uh, further ado, we'll um, hook into these questions. So the first question I got was from Antoinette and she's asked, why are you using clay in the system? So what um, Antoinette means is, I'll just reach behind me here. So this is the clay media Antoinette's asking about. The reason I've been using the clay media more than any other reason is I had a load left over from when we used to do hydroponics years ago uh, before we actually bought this place here. When we were renting we had a couple of indoor and outdoor hydroponics set up. So I had a fair bit of this clay uh, left over so I thought well the first uh, little barrel system we had was just use the clay and when I built up the other um, beds I decided to use this as well. It can be expensive depending on where you live and what brand you buy. I found it's great to work with on your hands, there's no sharp edges. It's also nice and light, so if, you, if weight is a bit of a concern, depending on where you're setting up your system, this clay might be something that you could think about using. It's basically a form of clay that has been formed into a bead and then fired at a high temperature, and it has loads of little pockets and uh, nooks and crannies in it, which is fantastic for aquaponics because it means you have more surface area on these little bits of clay for the bacteria to set up colonies, and those bacteria will um, assist you in the nitrification of the fish waste all the way through to plant available nitrates. So um, yeah, definitely something I don't mind having in the system, but if you're on a budget, there are other alternatives. There's things like uh, volcanic rock, known as scoria here in Australia, and also expanded shale. They're suitable for the aquaponic systems as well. Uh, please keep in mind, whatever media you're using, do wash it first, or you may end up with a load of dust and contaminant all the way through your system. Another popular media here in Australia is rock. And the two forms of rock I've seen used in a lot of systems are blue metal, which is basically a basalt rock. It's used as a road base here, and also river rock. You can't just use any rock. There are some rocks out there that have carbonates in them. What happens is, just due to the nitrification of the um, waste in the system here, the aquaponic system does tend to um, drop in pH, become a little bit acidic over time. If there's carbonates in the grow beds, the acid can um, act on them, release the carbonates into the water, and it can play havoc with your um, pH in the system and the alkalinity, and throw it all out of whack, making some nutrients not available to the plants. So it is a good idea to test the rock you're going to use in the system, if you are going to um, just go with some sort of a rock from a landscaping suppliers. I've uh, gone down to our local landscape supplier when I was selecting rock for the bottom half of this bed here and I took along a jar of vinegar. Now what you can do is pop a sample of the rock into this vinegar. Vinegar is acidic. If there is any carbonate based rocks in there you will start to see little bubbles of carbon dioxide form and go to the surface. So that's a good sign that that material is not suitable for your grow bed. The next question I've got is from Steve and Steve says, hi Rob, love the vids. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, just wondering, how do you get the clay balls to sink? I've got some clay balls that have been so and have been soaking them in water for the last 24 hours, but they still seem to float. Well, the only thing I can really suggest is just give it a couple more days. I have heard of people's clay taking anywhere up to three to four days to absorb enough water for it to weigh down. It depends on the brand and also too, you may have different, differing um, porosity values from batch to batch within a brand. So it may just take a little bit longer for the water to um, soak in there, fill up all those voids and weigh it down. But generally speaking, you know, after a day or two, it should soak up enough water and sit down all by itself. Self. Nazim has asked, g'day Nazim, Nazim has asked how long do we pump the water every day? Is it 24 hours a day? Yes, in our system here we have the water flowing through the system 24 hours a day. We use flood and drain beds using bell siphons. So what happens is the water will fill up the bed, it will go underneath the bell in the siphon arrangement, down the standpipe, a water lock will occur and a siphon will initiate. All the water travels under the edge of the bell, up the standpipe and then down out through into the sump tank. 
tank. And as the water evacuates from the grow bed, it pulls air and oxygen down into the media. So that's where the bacteria have access to oxygen. Not only that, also the roots of the plants because most plants do require a little bit of oxygen through their root zone. There are other ways you can um, set up the grow beds to run. So the pump isn't running 24 hours a day. And that's when you use a, a timer switch on your pump. Basic, just your water pump, not your air pump to the fish. Just the water pump. What happens is you can set it on for 15 minutes, so it floods the bed for 15 minutes, and then switches off, and a small hole in the base of the standpipe will evacuate the water back into the sump tank. Uh, some people will have the pump run for 30 minutes on and 30 minutes off. It's the same sort of thing as the bell siphon. It's allowing air to go down to the root zone of the plants and also for the bacteria on the grow media so they can get a little bit of oxygen. If you are running with a time system, I would caution you um, just quickly that you do need the total volume of your fish tank water to pass through the biofilters, which in a media-based system is the grow beds at least once per hour. So a thousand litre fish tank needs to have a thousand litres of water coming out of it, passing through the grow beds at least once per hour, bare minimum. Uh, it'd be even better if you could do it 1.5 to two times an hour or two times the volume per hour. You really do need that water in the fish tank to be cleaned by the bacteria. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you are designing your um, system and working out the um, flood timing if you aren't running the pump 24 hours a day. Now the next one isn't really a question as such, it's a comment I get a lot and it's mainly on clips where I do things like clean out the radial flow filter or mucking out the bio filter or even cleaning out the grow beds if I've let a little bit too much muck get in there and that is it looks like a lot of work to maintain the system so I've actually got a few pointers I'll be reading off a section of paper here so I don't forget them all with an aquaponic system it really is a very easy thing to run on a day-to-day -day basis all I basically need to do is come out here feed the fish go through the grow beds, pick what I want for dinner, and while I'm picking what I want for dinner, or lunch or breakfast, whenever I feel like snacking from the system, um, I just have a bit of a, throw a bit of a cursory eye over everything, make sure there's no pest pressures, no aphids, um, no caterpillars attacking the plants. So pretty much all the same as you would in a normal garden situation. Probably about two to three times a week at the moment, I'm popping the pH pen into the radial flow filter just to see what the pH of the water is coming out of the fish tank. It's very simple to do. I also do that in the afternoon while I'm going through and picking dinner. Um, pop it in there, do the rounds, come back, check the pH, clean the probe, put it away. It takes me all of an extra minute or so. It really doesn't add any extra time onto the system. Plus, I'm also getting a bit of an idea on how the levels are traveling in the system. And if need be, I can add my um, calcium hydroxide in there just to help nudge the pH up a bit. All of that probably takes an extra 30 seconds to a minute. Once a week, I do clean out the solids from the radial flow filter. Keep in mind that mine isn't, um, my cleaning mechanism isn't the most efficiently designed one. It probably takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. With mine, I've got a bit of a gutter arrangement that I need to set up to take the wastewater away uh, from the, the drain pipe that comes out of the fish tanks. I've also got to drain half the barrel down so I'm not wasting a lot of water because we are fairly water conscious here. And and then, yeah, it's just a matter of pumping the water directly out onto a garden bed that I think needs a bit of a feed up, um, give it a bit of a hose around, set it all back up. Um, it takes me roughly, as I said, about 15 to 20 minutes. After the filter's clean, I also use that opportunity to top up the sump tank in the system. Now, I'd like to say once a month, I also um, clean out the pump, make sure there's nothing obstructing the intake, but it's a case of um, do as I say and not as I do, to be totally honest. I check it probably three or four times a year, but yeah, that is something you should probably do at least once a month. Uh, another thing you should do probably two to three times a year is clean out your pipe work. Just get a bit of a bottle brush on a piece of rope and um, just run that down your pipe work to take off any bio slime that's built up or solids that may have built up in your pipe work as that will slow down the velocity of the water and just helps things run a little bit more smoothly. One job that can be a bit of a big one that should only ha happen every you know three to four years is cleaning out the solids from the grow beds if you have an issue with build up and anaerobic zones. That's some Thing. It probably takes me about two to three hours to do in one of these grow beds. Again, it's not a huge job, it's just something that you do every now and then. 
Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, when you compare this to the soil patch, well, I'm saving five to ten minutes a day not having to water these plants. I mean, they've got water available to them all the time, so I don't have to stand out there with a hose, especially in summer, and make sure they're well hydrated. Weeds generally aren't an issue in aquaponics either. The worst we get is an abundance of volunteer plants that sprout from seeds that have fallen from plants like lettuce. We also don't need to have to worry about mulching the surface uh, to prevent evaporation because we've got that dry layer of clay there. As far as fertilising goes, we, every couple of weeks I might add a scoopful of a kelp powder that contains potassium and some iron chelate just to boost the levels in the system. Some people like to watermate their systems to a degree as well. Some people go all out and they get dosing equipment hooked up to sensors and all that sort of thing. Um, a lot of backyarders will do uh, two basic things and that is a auto float uh, top up in the sump tank. So when the water drops to a certain amount, a little bit of water comes in, tops up the sump tank you know just make sure there's water in there all the time it's one less job you have to worry about I don't um, do that here because I like to know how much water I am using on a weekly basis with the plants in the system just to keep an eye on it plus I'm here pretty much all seven days a week so whenever it gets a little bit low I can pop out here and top it up myself you can also get automatic fish feeders as well uh, there's DIY plans online and you can also buy small commercial ones and little um, hobby ones as well I like to manually throw the feed in because it gives me a chance to check up on the fish as they come to the surface, see if any of them have got any um, crook looking spots or lesions or anything like that. Plus I just enjoy watching them hit their feed in the afternoon so, but if you are pressed for time or you're going away on holidays, it might be something you want to think about, a decent quality one that won't dump all the feed in at once and cause you hassles down the line. Just recently I also posted a clip on uh, one of the most frequently asked questions I get which is how many fish I have in my system so you can check on that little link up there and there'll be a little box pop up at the end of the um, video as well that you can check out uh, that'll take you directly to that video also need to send out a huge thanks to all the wonderful folks on Patreon who are continuing to support our channel and also to our marvellous super contributors. You can check out their links in the description down below there. Uh, if you like, um, you can hop on over to Patreon as well and suss out what we do over there. I will pretty much will leave it there though. I do hope you've enjoyed this clip and it has answered a couple of questions for you and I will catch you next time. Cheers folks, have a top one.